It's Wimmer of Football time, and uh, this fellow, uh, he's uh, been going hammer and tongs at the typewriter and putting things together. Uh, in fact, they use computers at the at Warwick Herald. They're pretty modern these days. He joins me now. Scotty Stewart, how are you? Yeah, good day, Wayne. Good, thanks. Ed, when you first started at the Herald, did you, did you work with typewriters in the good old days, or have you always been computers? Yeah, well, we, we've always been computers, but they were the old, yeah, old-fashioned ones. But the journos back in the day, they were all typewriters for starters. So, yeah, you when I started, that's that's about how it how it was. But um, oh gee, I can't remember the the uh, computer that I had, but it wasn't what they what you see nowadays. Anyway, it was a it was a keyboard and a and a small screen in front of you where your type would come up. But um, yeah, she's um, developed pretty well over the years, so uh, that's not too bad nowadays. Yeah, very good stuff. Um, well, it's uh, developed pretty well for the hour rats. Um, uh, rats they kick twenty one fourteen to nil three three. It's a big road trip from Ararat to nil up at Davis Park, the longest in the Wimmera football, and the rats went home pretty happy. They certainly do. They, they, as I said, probably a good way to to get it um, out of the way, nice and early. You think, you know, doing the longest road trip, and um, last weekend it was perfect weather for for any sport, um, footy, netball included. So um, I think they would have enjoyed the day. And if you, if you look through all the you know, the football scores, at least, you know, they've right through the the seniors have kicked over twenty one, over twenty goals a second. They kicked twenty five. I think the kids, the 17s, might have kicked up, pushed up around 29, 30 goals, and and the under 14s had a pretty good win themselves. So um, a uh, enjoy the day, I think, and um, a bit of an indicator, I think, with with our rat and and how it's going to be for this season. They sit on top of that there at the minute, but um, obviously only played the two games. But um, yeah, looking pretty good, I think. They are, and uh, Neil, it's a pretty tough ask for them but it's a tough ask too Stall have um, lost um, early games and they've uh, not been able to uh, really uh, trouble the scorers at this point in time these uh, Stall boys uh, they really are uh, struggling and that came up against a very very hostile Minyat Matoa who were able to win the match yeah well that's right it's Stall looks like they've, you know, they've been hanging in there pretty well for, for these games, but yeah, just not getting the job done. And you look at the scores there on Saturday with them, and at three-quarter time, it's only what's at nine, um, ten points separating the two sides. But look at the last quarter, and they haven't been able to uh, register a goal in what would have been pretty good conditions um, last weekend. So uh, a bit of a battle with, uh, with that final quarter there, but... Um, putting themselves in the game, but as you say, yeah, just not quite putting those the wins on the board at the minute, and they're the ones that have played the three games so far, and they're run from three after after the first uh, their first three rounds, I should say. So, um, yeah, they'll be looking for some opening points. Well, I'll tell you what, the last uh, Sunday match uh, was when the Saints, um, the 11-13-79, beat the uh, Sinners, as they say, the Horsham D 7-6-48. Uh, the Saints having a victory, and probably given the context of the Anzac week and so forth, a, a terrific performance by them. Yeah, exactly. On the Anzac, annual Anzac Day, Anzac Clash, I should say, for these two sides. And this one went the way of the Saints. We might have reported last week and we're talking now. I wasn't quite sure what, which is way this result would go. But um, no, the Saints have got it done pretty well. 24 scoring shots for 13. So they've um, enjoyed the uh, the nice sunny weather there last Sunday and um, and they got the d- job done pretty well. What about this result, though? The Anzac Park clash. There was the memorial of 100 years ago when the gates were installed. On that occasion, uh, the Warwick Nabil side beat the Dimboola side. This time around, the Warwick Eagles were nailed by Dimboola in a pretty comprehensive win by the visitors. 19-14, 128 to 10-8, 68. Yeah, it was a good weekend, um with the commemorating of the Anzac Park and 100 years. And as you say, 100 years ago, the result was a bit different. But last weekend, um, the Dimmy boys say they shone out. And um, you might mention here, but uh, Graham kicked seven and uh, Sammy Godden, he's kicked five goals. And uh, they just dominated the second half. At, at half time, um, the Eagles goal right on the siren. And, you know, it was only uh, less than, what was it, eight points, seven points the uh Sorry, 13 points difference at um, half time. But you look at the second half, and Dimi have gone six goals in the third, six in the in the last, and yeah, blew it right out to, to 10 goals at the end. And the Eagles battled on hard, but yeah, couldn't keep pace with them. You don't have the goal kicking at the moment uh, in the Eagles outfit. That's probably the key issue. When Graham kicks seven for them, and Sam Godden boots five, and then on your sheet you've got Inks to Johns and uh, O'Donnell all battling for a couple of goals apiece, um, and that could be something that uh, becomes a telling 
telling issue for the Eagles this year. There'll be some telling issues. I'm going to put one of them to you. We get to the fourth round of football next week before the Southern Mallee Giants get a home game at Hopeton. The 6th of May, everyone's been playing for weeks and they finally get to use their home deck. Yeah, I didn't realise that until this week with um, uh, round four um, the Giants. Not sure if the, the stall thing that's uh, going on at the minute um, might have had a bit of a, uh, a say in that because um, they did play them in the opening round down there. But um, yeah, what did you say? May, yeah, May 6th and the mm. first uh, home game at, <laughs> in, in May. But uh, well, I look forward to that, to, to be honest with you. So uh, three weeks on the road, but um, yeah, they'll be, they'll be happy to get back home. <laughs> they'll be um, home on their home deck um, the same day the new king is coronated. It's, <laughs> it's a fascinating situation. They haven't been able to get a home deck uh, till then. Um, so we go having a look at this week's game. So, and this is an important one. It's um, because the Dim Buller in good form. The arch rival are the Horsham D's. A bit niggle over the years between those two. And Dimmy, um, they might just start favourite here. Yeah, definitely start favourite, I would imagine. And, and you can only go on form of um, last week with, uh, from what I saw with Dim Buller and, um, and then Horsham yeah, falling away to the to the Saints. But um, Dimmy back on the home ground, um, they will appreciate that. And if uh, these boys, and like they did last week, and find their avenues to go, oh, they're going to be very hard to, to beat for the, to stop, I should say, for the Horsham um, uh, defence. But um, yeah, Benny Lakin, it's, uh, the main man at uh, Horsham, then the, in the uh, defensive line there, he'll have a good matchup. And whether he goes to Graham, that'll be uh, that'll be a good um, matchup itself right from the start. But um, look, I'd be I'd be tipping them all without knowing and seeing Horsham so far. But um, after seeing what they did last weekend, yeah, the Bruce will definitely start favouring this one. Now, Storr have the home deck at Central Park. They could be zipping four if the Saints beat them down there. And the Saints are a real chance after winning last week. I think we might have un- underestimated them a little. And I think that the Saints can win down at Storr. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, uh, this will be a good one, won't it? This, this game, I reckon, with uh, Stoll sort of mentioned there that they've been in the contest uh, for most of the game before, what, for example, last week before falling away in that last quarter. And uh, the Saints, well, they've, um, they've, they've got their opening two games and coach uh, Benny not there. Must have them pretty well um, going pretty well. I think last weekend I heard from reports uh, Angus Martin played a, a pearl of a game last weekend. He was uh, clear best on ground. So if he can uh, continue that form and um, can uh, combine with uh, his forward line teammates and uh, he'll, he'll, they'll give uh, Stoll a bit of a run for their money. I think this is going to be played in not bad weather down there. Yeah, look, you've got to go on winning form, and that's what the Saints have got at the minute. And do the Warwick Eagles travel down to Ararat? It's a road trip for you blokes. Um, Alexander Oval won't to hold um, that too much for you because I think the Rats might be too good. Yeah, look, they're going to start favourite for sure. They're, uh, they, that's how I'd say to you. I think Matty Wilder's is going to have a, a good year with his uh, young Rats down there, and um, he's going to get them playing a pretty... Uh, Pretty good uh, brand of footy, and on their home deck down there, the wide expanses, uh, they're probably going to test the Eagles. You said it before about the, the scoring power of the Eagles. They will be bolstered this week with a couple of key inclusions and a couple of recruits that they picked up at um, the start of the year. Big Joe McKinnon uh, down the forward line there and uh, Tom James through the through the middle will um, will be uh, will be handy, but they will go in without uh, Brian McKenzie again. He's um, still overcoming a, uh, a calf injury, but they've they booed a young fellow last week in uh, young Max Inkster, and uh, that's, that's always a thrill when you see the young fellow. Max is only 15 years of age, and uh, yeah. a couple of goals there last weekend, and really showed that um, you know you'll be you'll be a part of that senior team for for a long time. So that was good to see. But yeah, look, getting back to uh, you win and you lose, it, winner and you loser. Yeah, are, are going to be definitely heavily favoured this one. All right, it is the big one, though. I've been leaving it till last for a good reason. It is the big Delahunty clash. Uh, it's the Delahunties from Minyat Matoa taking on the Southern Mallee Giants, whose coach is the Delahunty. And it's at Matoa, if you don't mind. The Giants come in to see if they can upset one of the league leaders. Yeah, this is a, this is a uh, good little preview uh, early in the season. And this one with, um, with uh, the Burroughs and the Giants. The Giants have only played one game, I think. Whether that goes against them, um, you know, coming off a, a bye, who knows? It's um, 
sometimes you see it and, and it's it's not really uh, in your favour coming off a buy and, and you know, fronting up to Mini Matoa on the home ground at, at Matoa is going to be a tough one. So look, I'll, you know, I'll be in, if I'm tipping, I'll be saying Mini Matoa only on the basis of those reasons there. But I do hear around the traps that the, the Giants are going to be up and about and at full strength. I think most of uh, all of their new recruits are available this week and um, they will have a, a full strength side to to take it up to the boroughs and, and I'm presuming that again looking through their line up to the boroughs they're pretty much at full strength too and and uh, it, it'll be a crack of a game and hopefully the weather is uh, is good and it gives a, a good uh, spectacle and and as you said there Kieran playing against the the former tie for the for the first time it'll be a very uh, it'll be interesting the boroughs are they're they're a good bunch so there's not going to be any too much animosity against this I think it's just the way it goes but. You never know what uh, the heat of the battle. She'll she'll keep going, won't it? And it's uh, it'll it'll be a crack of a game. And as I said, look at to tip a winner. The, maybe the boroughs just. I tell you what, uh, I reckon John Jordan and Lockie will be uh, out there saying a couple of words to Kieran and the, the Della Hunty family. Maybe uh, they will put their Christmas um, the festivities uh, from the past on hold in this game of footy. I tell you, I'm going to give you one big pronunciation. I tried to get out a bit earlier when we were talking to Sammy about this. Uh, Makicha Rotamu Onus. I hear that. Uh, that I see that name, and I um, you said it. <laughs> on that note, uh, I'm going to let you go, Scotty Stewart, uh, and we'll catch you next week. Good on you. No worries. Thanks, Wayne.